All right, thank you very much, uh, Peter, and thank you very much, Mark. Uh, the, uh, the focus of my presentation is going to be interoperability certification as a key enabler to cross the chasm towards mass market adoption of, of LiFi. Uh, and I hope, uh, Amir, that by the end of my presentation, you also will have a, a, a detailed answer to your uh, certification question. Uh, before uh, I, I delve in, first of all, I'd like to apologize to all of you. I had really looked forward to meeting all of you in person. Uh, you are now present in my backyard. Uh, unfortunately, as Peter indicated, uh, somewhere during my travels, I contracted uh, COVID, which means I am now in self-isolation less than five kilometers from where you are. But uh, yeah, those are the realities of <laughs> our current society. Uh, and we'll have to look for our next opportunity to meet face to face. Before I go into the details of my presentation, uh, first introducing uh, the company that I work for, Signify. We are the world leading company in, uh, in the lighting industry. We have been for, uh, for more than, um, than 100 years. Uh, we, we lead the lighting industry in a number of important market segments, including connected lighting and, and LED lighting. Uh, our uh, revenue in last year was almost uh, 7 billion, uh, three quarters of which were from the professional segment. Uh, we're a large company. Uh, we have a global presence in, in many countries with local sales forces. And we are particularly proud of being 100% uh, carbon neutral in our operations. Uh, Signify is a rather new name, even though we're, uh, we've been around for more than 100 years. But you may know us uh, uh, under our previous name, uh, Philips Lighting. We split off as a separate independent company in 2019. But some of the brands uh, that we have uh, may be familiar to you, like Philips, of course, uh, but also Hue and, uh, of course, uh, True LiFi, which is the, the, the name of our LiFi proposition. Now, uh, if you've heard me speak before, and I saw many uh, familiar names uh, amongst the attendees, and my key message in my presentations in the past 18 months have been uh, LiFi is real, it's here, we're ready today. Uh, and uh, in fact, the slide you're seeing is my closing slide from this, from this conference uh, from last year, uh, where I closed off by saying we are on the runway, uh, LiFi is taking off and you need to jump on board right now. And this is exactly what we've done in the past year. Uh, you've seen in the presentation from Mark from the Light Communications Alliance just before me, a number of uh, commercial announcements from the past year, very exciting. Uh, and, and many of the companies that are present today um, and are very active in the LIFI industry had similar, very exciting commercial uh, announcements, which clearly indicates that uh, LIFI is taking off. Uh, but of course, we always want to grow it uh, further. Um, and I, I took here a model of the technology adoption life cycle. I think uh, what we've done in the past couple of years is to recognize that uh, the innovations and the breakthroughs in research have been absolutely amazing and have brought us to a position where we can launch commercial products into the market. And that's been my call out to the industry um, uh, for the last uh, 18 months or so. We are ready, the technology is there, let's start building products. And we've done that, uh, not just uh, the company that I work for, Signify, but many of you and, and the companies out there in the industry have done similar things. Uh, and, and we've put LiFi products in the hands of the early adopters. And I'm, I'm really excited uh, about that. But of course, we want to grow it even further. Uh, I think the challenge now is to move from uh, early adoption to the early majority. Um, and that's not a trivial problem. In fact, uh, it, it's quite tricky to do so. And many new technologies struggle to make that leap towards that uh, early majority, which is uh, really the start of the mass market uptake. And there are many things that you need to get right in order to, uh, to, to, to make this, this important step. Uh, but one of those steps is to increase consumer confidence. Uh, early adopters are very different from the early majority. Early adopters are, uh, uh, are more likely to take risk, to take on products that perhaps are not quite finished yet, but the early majority, they're very pragmatic. They need, uh, to, they need solid solutions to solve problems that they're facing uh, in their lives today. 
which means that they need solid technologies. They need the confidence that the solutions they pick will actually uh, serve them well, not today, but even for years to come. And one of the aspects that they will be looking for uh, is the ability to pick and choose from multiple manufacturers. Uh, they don't want to be locked in. They want to be future proof. Uh, so a key requirement is to have multiple players in the industry where they can pick and choose the products that fit their needs and their requirements and their specific use case. They want to be able to mix and match the best of breed from, uh, from different uh, vendors uh, and, and move forward that way. And the key to make this all happen is interoperability. And that's gonna be a major theme throughout my uh, presentation. Now, uh, providing some historic perspective, interoperability used to be rather easy in the lighting industry. Uh, you have a light bulb that has a cap and then you define a, a holder, uh, you screw the bulb into the holder and, and bobs your uncle. Uh, that's what interoperability looked like in the lighting industry for the past 100 years. Uh, we would have a very specific uh, specification for this cap and holder where you define the mechanical interface and the thermal interface and the electrical interface. And if you do that right, then the industry can grow to tremendous uh, uh, volumes, which we have seen with the lighting industry in the past 100 years. And this standard has served us very well. In fact, uh, uh, more than 130 years later, we still use variants of this standard. Um, and, and even though the standard is old, uh, 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 it still allows uh, uh, innovation to take place and uh, it still allows our market to, to grow. And, and that has been really fantastic. But a lot more has been going on. And we have not only standardized on the mechanical interface to, uh, to interoperate with our products, uh, our products have evolved uh, and, and communication and connectivity has been added to lighting products. And this is where things get interesting because not only do the lighting products themselves interoperate like bulbs, but they can interoperate with switches, with sensors, with gateways to larger connectivity systems, uh, all based on standards. And this is all what I'm showing in the top of the slide here, still within uh, a single company and within a single uh, uh, lighting uh, market segment, but it grows much bigger. And you can add connected bulbs from other manufacturers. And here I'm showing the uh, IKEA uh, track free bulb, uh, but you can also add switches from other manufacturers uh, like Schneider Electric, but you can also add uh, smart speakers like the uh, Amazon Echo. Uh, the Google Nest thermostat, the Ring doorbell, uh, Ambilight TVs, your uh, Razer uh, uh, gaming keyboard. Uh, there's really no limit to how you can expand the use cases to make interesting uh, applications for, for consumers, all based on standards. Uh, interoperability standards are the foundation to make this all possible. Now, how can we carry this over to the, to the Li-Fi space? Eh? Fortunately, we already have a standard. And for many years, the ITU has been developing a suite of home networking uh, broadband access standards called uh, G.HN. And the latest derivative of that is uh, G.VLC or G.9991, as it's known in the industry. And this technology has been available for over a decade and has proven itself to be very resilient and high quality. Uh, and, and it's also proven itself to be very suitable to be extended for, uh, for Li-Fi purposes. Um, not only has the technology been available for years, but uh, uh, very importantly, uh, uh, silicon has been available for all those years. And it's of course very important if you want to build uh, commercially great uh, Li-Fi products. And, and we've seen that because the Li-Fi products themselves implementing this standard and these chipsets have been on the market also for, for a number of years uh, already, from not only from ourselves, but from many of you as well. Uh, and finally, an interoperability certification framework for these technologies has been in place for many years. And it is this uh, last aspect that I'm gonna focus on in the remainder of my, uh, my presentation. Uh, this interoperability framework, it is in place. Uh, what does it consist of? Uh, it's a proven solid, uh, test methodology and procedures that allows vendors of products 
uh, and systems and components for those systems to, to test and validate compliance to uh, standards uh, with uh, independent accredited test houses uh, and ensure that the products interoperate with those of, uh, of other manufacturers in the industry. An extensive governance policy framework that uh, surrounds these uh, methodologies uh, is in place as well. Uh, very important uh, is the use of accredited test houses uh, because this allows for independent third party uh, validation of, uh, of, in, of uh, individual vendor claims and allows for quality control. There's a, a wide extensive tool set uh, available with automated uh, test scripts that allows for very efficient and effective uh, testing by individual companies. Um, so it doesn't really impede your uh, uh, product development cycles and it doesn't uh, uh, put up a barrier for, for market entry. Uh, this program has been available and, and in operation for many years. Uh, and it's resulted in an extensive database of uh, approved silicon vendors and certified systems. So this promise of uh, uh, increasing consumer confidence by uh, uh, by showing that the technology is future proof and that you can really mix and match is really, uh, it's there, it's a reality. Uh, and the system uh, we found uh, can be easily extended for the derivatives of G.HN, such as uh, G.VLC. So it's, it's, it's perfectly suited for our purposes in, uh, in LiFi. Now, of course, that does require some, some work. Um, you might ask yourself, the certification framework, what does it really entail? Uh, isn't all you need just a test spec and perhaps a document where you describe the test setup? Well, actually, a lot more is needed to, to set this up. Uh, it, it requires really careful thought in how you do this to make it uh, reliable and robust uh, and to produce uh, repeatable uh, results uh, and to increase that consumer confidence. And some of the documents that you need, uh, of course, you require a, a process that describes how all this, uh, all this is taking place, how you need to uh, activate the program, how you need to go through that program. There's a, a large documentation set that is required for companies and applicants for the certification mark, uh, how you do this. Um, if you work with uh, independent accredited test houses, of course, you need working procedures for them. Also, you need the ability to audit their capabilities and you want to make sure that they have the expertise and the tool sets and the quality control processes in place to indeed produce valuable and, uh, and validated test results uh, uh, to make sure that the um, interoperability certification mark really carries value. value. Uh, and underpins the, the promise of, uh, of interoperability. Uh, once you complete the certification process, uh, you'll be able to carry a mark uh, or a logo. And of course, that, uh, that comes with some license agreements. It often is tied to, uh, to IP license policies uh, that link back to the standards organization. Um, and in case disputes uh, arise or uh, certificates needs to be revoked, uh, then a, a dispute resolution process also needs to be in place. And there are many more documents that, uh, that come into play, but this hopefully gives you a flavor of what it takes to put in place such a uh, certification framework, uh, and also helps explain why it is so useful that an organization like uh, HomeGrid Form is already in place and has been successfully operating such a certification program for, for many, many years. And that really allows us as LiFi industry to make use of all that great work and all the, the tools and processes already in place to extend that to LiFi uh, as well. Now, the, the task of uh, writing this uh, test specification and test setup and making sure that LiFi can plug into this larger framework. And for this purpose, uh, we tooled up a LiFi task force within the HomeGrid forum. Uh, I've included here a screen capture of the website. Um, uh, I encourage you to, uh, to visit this page to see what we're doing. Uh, I also encourage you to, to join this activity. And many of us in the industry have come together to, uh, to develop standards, uh, which is a, a necessary and fantastic uh, first step that is needed for interoperability. Uh, but it's not enough. Uh, uh, being compliant to a standard uh, it is a great uh, quality step, 
uh, but you also need to be interoperable with other compliant implementations of that standard. And for this, really, you need a uh, interoperability certification program. So I'm really hoping that all the players and stakeholders that came together in defining the standard uh, will now also come together in uh, developing this interoperability uh, certification program. Now, what uh, uh, work do we undertake in this task force? What, what are we doing here uh, in order to set this up? Uh, uh, one of the discussion points that we have is to look at a high level abstract reference architecture for a LIFI system, uh, uh, this will be familiar to, to some of you. Uh, uh, essentially, uh, a LIFI system breaks down in, in the baseband, which uh, takes care of the digital uh, signal uh, generation, and then the ana analog uh, front end part, which then takes that digital baseband signal and transfers it to the uh, optical domain for transmission over a uh, light channel. Now, there's, there's several uh, interfaces where you can uh, uh, start testing. And we've had extensive discussions in HomeGrid Forum with various uh, LiFi uh, companies to come together and figure out what, what makes the most sense to start testing. Uh, for for conformance testing, uh, you may want to be as close to the digital signal as possible, and it makes it uh, very easy to test. Uh, but it's not always accessible in a uh, commercially implemented uh, system. And the closer you get to the optical output, uh, the closer you get to the real uh, accessible interface from, from a product. And, and this is really where we want to test because th those are the products and the interfaces that are available uh, to consumers, to end users. So you want to be as close to that uh, as possible. Uh, and we delved a little bit further in the Home Grid Forum LiFi Task Force and, and looked at really the, uh, the two options for an optical interface. And there's the, the interface at the chip surface level, uh, which might make it really easy to test, but it's not always accessible. Uh, you can't always access the, uh, the bare LED because there may be some, uh, some optics uh, glued or otherwise uh, connected to the system. And you may have to break it in order to get access, uh, and that's really not what you want. So the decision that we took is to really uh, uh, test at the A0 interface, as we call it, it's really the optical interface as you see it in uh, commercially uh, available end products. Uh, we're further developing this. Um, uh, this is work in progress and we invite uh, all players to, to join us in this, uh, in this effort. Um, we've also looked at the, the test setup, uh, how we uh, want to do this. Uh, we want to make this as simple as possible. So we're looking at uh, an optical bench setup with a mounting rail where you can uh, mount your reference transceiver and your device on the test, eh, which is the, the implementation that a vendor submits for, uh, for validation and testing, uh, which then hopefully uh, after successful completion of the testing will bear the, uh, the certification mark and then can be sold uh, in the market. And, and consumers will know by looking at the logo on the product, hey, this is a, a validated uh, product, uh, which I can rely on to be um, uh, interoperable. So we, we've looked at some abstract uh, ways to define how we set this up. Uh, it's a bit abstract, of course. So here I include a picture which I just picked from the, from the internet. It's just for reference only. What we really wanna do is pick tools and methods that are easy and uh, readily available to, uh, to all vendors uh, in the market, but also the, to make it easy for test houses to build up these capabilities. Uh, not all test houses that are used to uh, interoperability standards testing and validation uh, may have uh, optical expertise, so we want to make it as easy as possible uh, for them. Um, and, and it's really not uh, too much of a stretch. Uh, I've asked our engineers to take a picture from our labs. Uh, this is an even simpler setup, but it allows you to, uh, to test uh, transceivers and uh, uh, together you, you can introduce uh, filters uh, to introduce attenuation in the system if, if you want. It, it's not too difficult. Uh, and, and these are the things that we're uh, currently working on in the uh, interoperability test spec and certification program. There are more things that we uh, want to pick up uh, as we go. Uh, we, we've looked at a way to introduce attenuation, um, but we also want to introduce noise and disturbances. Uh, we're thinking about and discussing how to do that. Uh, we started out by uh, discussing point-to-point -point communication, but obviously we want to uh, 
to cover a broad set of, of use cases and uh, system setups and architectures. So we want to extend this to point to multipoint as well. Um, uh, we've started with protocol conformance tests, but we want to look at optical tests as well. Uh, obviously, uh, the field of view and beam angles and, and, and choice of, uh, of frequencies is going to be very important. And we want to be able to test at least some minimum performance uh, uh, for these systems as well, because uh, ultimately that contributes to interoperability as well. And once we have this all set up, we need to start introducing a strong and enforceable uh, interoperability logo that vendors can carry on their product and which consumers can look for when they design their systems and make their purchasing and supply chain uh, decisions. And then finally, uh, as one uh, topic, uh, we may also uh, potentially look at uh, specifying the interface between the baseband and the optical front end. This is really a little bit farther off in, in time. Uh, but the benefit of doing this, uh, it would allow um, uh, interoperability not only on the complete system level, but, only, but also on the component level. Uh, for example, we've seen in the industry, some of our uh, uh, friends have, um, uh, have put on the market uh, uh, camera mo antenna modules, light uh, antenna modules. And, and we want to make sure that these uh, are also interoperable and can be used uh, throughout uh, systems of multiple vendors. So hopefully this gives you some idea of the activities that we're undertaking in the area of uh, interoperability certification. Uh, also some of the areas where we, we are still working on and where you may uh, consider making a, a contribution to help drive the industry forward uh, and increase consumer confidence so that we can really uh, bridge the gap between the early adopters and the early majority. And we can start entering into uh, mass markets, which hopefully will help all our companies uh, be uh, very successful. So uh, I'm ending my presentation with a call to action. Please join us at the multi-vendor standards-based interoperability certification program. It can only be a success if it is, uh, uh, has wide industry support uh, from all the stakeholders across the value chain. So uh, again, I'm inviting all of you to, to participate. We've successfully completed the standard. Now the next step in increasing uh, consumer confidence is to uh, ensure interoperability uh, across all uh, companies in the value chain. And with that, I'm uh, ending my presentation and I'm happy to entertain uh, any questions uh, if you have them for me. Thank you so much.